So, for this morning, what we want to do, we want to jump into a uh, new sermon. I'm going to call it a series. We'll see what happens next week. It may turn into a series. <laughs> but I am simply um, amazed by God alone, but I'm even more amazed the more and more I learn about the Holy Spirit. You hear about the Holy Spirit and you witness the Holy Spirit, but it's another thing to study the Holy Spirit and really to get to know what God has revealed in His Word about His Holy Spirit. Now, all of us have spirits, but there's only one Holy Spirit. Oh, there are other demonic spirits, but there's only one Holy Spirit. And we serve a God that issues and distributes His Holy Spirit evenly across all of His children. Amen? Amen. So there's, a, there's one question I want for us to answer. There's one question I want for us to entertain. How do you know you're saved? How do you know that you have God? How do you know that you have the Holy Spirit? There's one thing that we come to know, and, is, and that is when we accept Christ into our lives, that we get a full embodiment of the Holy Spirit. I say that to say that, I say that to say against those that tend to believe, well, there's just a little bit of the Holy Spirit here, and just a little piece of the Holy Spirit here, like it's a, you know, a, a big cloth or something, just snipping off a little piece for everybody. No, no, no. You get a full embodiment of the Holy Spirit whenever you confess the name of God. Whenever you confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, and you accept him as your personal Savior, you get the Holy Spirit. But there's one thing to say you get the Holy Spirit, but there's another thing to understand what you actually get. Because you can get like a, say, say it's like Christmas, and you get like the, uh, 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 you have the office party that gives to, everybody has $5, and everybody can get you whatever gift, and they put it in this little box. You have no idea what it is. All you know is, it's about $5. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Could be a piss dispenser, could be a comb. Comb for me would mean absolutely nothing. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? It could be a little bit of everything, but you know it's only $5. Mm -hmm. But when we consider that we have the Holy Spirit, I want for us to, cons to consider we've got God. We have God. And so before I go any further, I just simply want to, want to ask you all to do me a favor. Will y'all put your hands together for my DJ? <laughs> Interject that at this point in the in the sermon because we tend to separate and, 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 and we let me say it differently. We it, there may be a danger of us separating the music that is played and the sermon that is preached. But I want to let you know something. Everything about Blessed Church has the Holy Spirit resting upon it. It may not seem like it. It may not sound like it. But everything that the that that the, that blessed church does has the Holy Spirit resting upon it. Even the songs that DJ plays. The reason why I love him playing the music that he plays is because his music sings what my heart has been singing all week. He, he, the music that he selects seems to resonate with what's been going on with me. Now, the last song just simply says you just need to call on the name of Jesus. Now, I don't know what's been going on in your life, but I know what my last week was like. And I just simply needed to call on the name of Jesus. Now, I couldn't even define all the issues that I was going through last week, but what I do know is that I know the name of Jesus. I may not be able to tell you what my problem is. I may not be able to point out my enemy. I ain't got to. I just know to call out to the name of Jesus. By his name, every knee shall bow. Oh, and I rest heavy on that. Because when anything comes against me, I just simply know that eventually, that's all right, you can mess with me now, but eventually you're going to bow. Oh, oh you, you may be giving me trouble here in 2019, but there will come a day in time when you will bow. Your enemy and your troubles all have a God. They just didn't recognize it yet. Mm -hmm. Rest easy. Rest easy. Whatever you face, that Jesus reigns true over everything. Mm -hmm. But there's one thing that we need to understand. Before you get to Jesus, you got to go through the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesus says, I am the way. And before you get to God, you got to go through Jesus. But this is what, what we're finding in the passage here is that no one ever even confesses Jesus as Lord unless they do it by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit, he, he, he's called the third person of the Godhead only 
because of how man came to know him, not in terms of importance. The Holy Spirit himself is God. Amen? Amen. Amen. So this morning I'm going to talk about spiritual gifts. There's one way we know that we've got the Holy Spirit is because we can recognize we got spiritual gifts. Now the question really to all of us to, to answer before this day is, what you do with the gift he gave you? What do you do with the gift he gave you? So if we jump into um, uh, this, this little passage, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, starting at, uh, at uh, verse 1, the first seven verses. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols, however you were led. Therefore I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed. And no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. It's given to each one for the profit of all. Who cares what you have if you don't know what you have? At the confession of Christ as your personal Savior, you get the Holy Spirit. And what you get is not just a nickel and dime gift. You get God residing in you. Our Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit dwells within us. He, dwell, he sets up shop. Dwell means he didn't just come to pay rent. He didn't come just to pay a night's stay. He came to pay mortgage. He comes to live in you and to live in you eternally. So we have the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is God. I don't know how God does it. If you expected this sermon to explain to you how God does what he does, I'm sorry. We just have to wait till we get to the other side of eternity to ask him that question. How do you embody all of your children all at the same time? But he left one clue. He left one clue. We know God is omnipresent, meaning he is everywhere all at the same time. For well, the Holy Spirit is God, so therefore the Holy Spirit is also omnipresent. He doesn't stop there. Every characteristic that we impinge upon God is the same that we attach to the Holy Spirit. He is also omniscient. He even knows the very thoughts of God. No one knows the thoughts of God except the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit knows everything and anything. He is the most intelligent, just like God is the most intelligent. He is also omnipotent. He's got all power. All power. Just as God the Father has all power. Just as Jesus our Lord has all power. When we say God can do exceedingly, abundantly, look, you're talking about the Holy Spirit as well. Anything that you ask, there is nothing impossible. For our God, there is nothing impossible for the Holy Spirit. And He is eternal. When God stepped out on nothing, to speak something into, from nothing, the Holy Spirit was there with him. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and earth, and it says that the, His Spirit hovered above the waters, that was the Holy Spirit. So in Genesis 1, the Holy Spirit was there. When, when, when it was revealed to God about the end times, it, it was revealed to God, it, sorry, it was revealed to John through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was, well, it is mentioned time and time again in the book of Revelations, even in the book of Revelations, speaking to the churches. The Holy Spirit is everlasting. He's omnipresent. He's all-powerful. And He's all-knowing. There is absolutely nothing that the Holy Spirit can't do. And that's what you got to understand. If you check your tag, if someone was to check your tag in the back of your shirt, they would know exactly whose name you're wearing. Mm -hmm. But if they never check, they don't know who you're wearing. Mm -hmm. You can be wearing brand, you can a brand, which ain't worth a dime. <laughs> Or you could be wearing some other Michael Kors or, or Ralph Lauren or whatever other brand you value. But until you check the tag, you have absolutely no idea what you're holding. I want you to know that the tag that's on the inside of your life is the Holy Spirit. 
As a child of God, if anybody is to check your tag, they ought to read the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've got an identity. Your identity is not trapped in your name. Your identity is not even trapped in your job. It's not trapped in the car you drive, the zip codes you live in, the house you implanted yourself in. Your identity is captured in the Holy Spirit. Amen. You're a child of God only because I can check your tag. Mm -hmm. And he's so, he's so wonderful, he's so wonderful, he's so wonderful. That he disperses gifts to everybody. And it tells us in the passage that we just read that, that the gifts that he disperses to everybody, they're diverse. It's diverse. It, it, the, 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 it's varied. It's, it's very varied. It, and I look at it like this. When you, when you look at gifts and you look at the variability of the gift, you tend to, you, I tend to attach to that the person must be rich. You may not get it. Let me take you back to Christmas 1983. I don't know what was under your tree. But under every poor boy's tree was some long johns <laughs> and some underoos. <laughs> the rich kid got toys. <laughs> but under our tree was some drawers. <laughs> and 84 was the same thing. 85, the exact same thing. 86 was no, was no difference. Just a different size. <laughs> But when you talk about the rich and the famous, you can simply read about the Christmas gifts they get, and every year it changes. I mean, and it's more, just, just more magnificent than the last year. It's, it's just overflowing with, with luxury. And, well, that's, the, that's, that's how we look at the spiritual gifts. He, 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 he embodies every last one of us with certain spiritual gifts. I don't know what your spiritual gifts are, but I know you got them. And that's the evidence that you've got the Holy Spirit. When you are able to recognize that he's gifted me this way, then you're able to recognize I can only get this gift by the Holy Spirit. Now, how do I know that? This is how I know that. You can go get paid for talent, but you won't get paid for spiritual gifts. So that they'll pay you for your talent. But what you don't understand is your talent is magnified by your spiritual gifts. They will never recognize your spiritual gifts. Your resume is not where you list your spiritual gifts, but you can list your talents and your skills and the, the things that you that accumulated through education. But when it comes to your spiritual gifts, your spiritual gifts is what makes you you and gives you evidence that the Holy Spirit resides in you. And this is the other thing. Your spiritual gifts make you unique. Everybody is different. Everybody is painted and made up different. Everybody has different spiritual gifts stitched into them by the Holy Spirit. They're activated by the Holy Spirit. When you have the spiritual gift of faith, your faith don't mean anything until the Holy Spirit energizes that faith. If you try to operate on faith alone by yourself, you will wear yourself out. But when the Holy Spirit activates your faith, then your faith, you, that, that, that spiritual gift, becomes like an explosion. And you're able to do things that you never thought you could. You're able to do things people didn't think you could do. They come up to you like, I didn't even know that was you. I know you could do that. God's got a way to put stuff in you. But then he is the active ingredient to whatever mixture he's put inside you. Until you pour in more God, until you plug into God, and until you activate God, your Holy Spirit, you, 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 your, your spiritual gifts, you're operating under your own power. And you can do that, but that's like, that's like buying a brand new car and then pushing it all the way everywhere you go. It can get there. You're just going to be tired by the time you get there. But if you would just put some petrol in that gas tank, press that gas pedal, and let that engine do what that engine is supposed to do, now you see your Cadillac, your Infiniti, your Lincoln, or whatever you drive. I saw a Maserati the other, the other day. I'm like, man, you gone. That's a beautiful car. I don't know what, I don't want no parts of that car, no, but I love the car. Love the car. But wouldn't it be a shame to see somebody pushing a Maserati? 
Wouldn't it be a shame to see somebody push on Bugatti? So it is a shame when we don't recognize that we have spiritual gifts and then we don't ask the Holy Spirit to activate that spiritual gift within us. Why have all that power? Why have the gift and not put that gift to use? But there's something else that I want for us to understand. There's a gift return policy with your spiritual gift. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's a gift return policy. Now, during Christmas or your birthday, I'm just going to say, I'm going to put this out there. I'm, yes, today, right now, not today, just this moment at 1032, I am a prophet. Somebody's going to give you a gift that you don't want. <laughs> see there? See there? Activated in your life already. <laughs> I don't know if it's this year or next, but somebody at some point in your life is going to give you a gift that you don't want. And you're going to be looking in the rest of that gift box to see if there's a gift receipt. <laughs> because you don't want to store credit. <laughs> <laughs> there's a gift return policy to every store that we know of. Even Amazon has a gift return policy. Walmart has a gift return policy. CVS has a gift return policy. Your God has a gift return policy. Now, you can return the gift that you've gotten to the store, but your spiritual gift, and it seems like you're putting the gift giver to shame. How dare they have bought you something that ain't your size? How dare they buy you something that ain't your color? How dare they buy you a toothbrush? What they trying to tell you? I know it's electric. I don't care. I don't need a toothbrush. My, well, okay, maybe I do. All right, give me the toothbrush. <laughs> but the point there is, the people will give you a gift that you may not necessarily want. The Holy Spirit gives you gifts you may not know that you want, but you definitely, definitely need. When you get the gift, the test in the gift is whether or not you give it back to God. You see, you return your physical gifts because you may not want them. But, and, and you're not expected to return those gifts. But when God gives you a gift, he's expecting you to return. That gift is not just for you. That gift is for everybody in the church. It tells us in the scripture that your gift is so that all may profit. Let me not say it that way because that was maybe a little too strong. Let me say it this way. I love those who speak in tongues, but baby, we need some tongue interpreters. <laughs> was that nice enough? I hope that was nice enough. We need some tongue interpreters, and that's also a spiritual gift. If we speak in tongues and no one understands, then only you and you profit. But when we speak in tongues and everybody can understand what God is saying to you, then everybody profits. Yes. When you have wisdom, which is also a spiritual gift, if you keep it to yourself and you sell it, you profit from it, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's a worse thing when no one else profits from it. My life could be better because y'all sitting on wisdom that I need. Now I'm broken, disgusted, and y'all just sitting on wisdom. But when we share that wisdom with the rest of our church, with the rest of our, 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 the body of Christ, then everybody profits. And this is the biggest thing when we return those, when we return our gifts to God, God is glorified. That's the ultimate game. God is glorified. There's a, in, 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 in 1 Kings, you will have the second king of Israel. Sorry, the third king, King Solomon. King Solomon went to God at the start of his kingdom, at the start of his kingship, and asked God for something. God appeared to him in a dream, and God told him, ask for whatever you want. Solomon asked God for wisdom. God says, I will not only give you wisdom, I will make you richer and more honorable than anyone else that has ever lived before you or will ever come after you. So Solomon is known for two things. One, having way too many wives. Two, for being the richest man to have ever lived. But those riches he got 
was because he asked God for something instead of, he asked God for wisdom instead of asking God for riches. He could have went to school. You, you all not understand what I'm saying. He could have went to school and got wise. He, he could have, he could have uh, uh, lived life and just got a little bit wiser. But when he got his wisdom from God, then he was able to, he was able to uh, 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 gain respect amongst all the Israelites and even foreign countries respected him. So in that same passage, this is how he showed his wisdom. In that same passage, in that same chapter, 1 Kings chapter 3, there were two women that came to him. And they had one baby. And they said to him, King, this lady has taken my baby. We were both in the same house, living in the same place. And when, when I went to bed last night, my baby was breathing. When I woke up the next day, my baby was dead. When I checked my baby, I noticed it wasn't my baby. It was her baby. So King Solomon did the, 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 the uh, something which seems unscrupulous. He says, bring me a sword. Bring me a sword. Find, get the baby. Lay the baby out. We're just going to chop the baby in half. And give her one half and give her one half. One lady spoke up and said, you know what, King? Don't worry. Let her have the baby. There King Solomon used the wisdom that God gave him to tell her that's her baby. Because this other hussy was willing to just let the baby get chopped up. So I know it ain't her baby. I only know two things about women. They give birth and they love their babies. That's all I know. Their babies are a, a, a criminal. They don't care. They love their baby. Their baby robbed them. They don't care. They love their baby. So I know the baby is hers. He could have gone to every school that was available to him as a king. He could have had every teacher come in and teach him. He would have never, ever reached the heights that he would have reached in terms of wisdom, except he got his wisdom from God. When God gives you wisdom, when God gives you the gift of tongues, when God gives you the gift of prophecy, when God gives you the gift of interpreting tongues, when God gives you faith, when God gives you your spiritual gift of administration, you can go and profit from it. You can actually uh, 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 use it to undergird your talents and get money from it. Or you can return it to God and use his expected gift return policy. And not only watch the church, not only watch the church grow, but see God glorify. There is one truth in this world. There are more and more people that are drifting away from God. And some of them will say, not all of them, some of them will say, it's because I don't see God. I, I just don't see him. On a day-to-day -day basis, I can't recognize what you're talking about. I, I don't see this God that you're speaking of. I wonder if the unchurched are not seeing God in the church because the church don't know their spiritual gifts. And the church are maybe not operating within their spiritual gifts. And every gift that God gives us is important to the body of Christ. It doesn't matter what your gift is. Every gift is important to the body of Christ. You know you have the Holy Spirit when you recognize your gifts. And when you use your gifts, when you return that gift to God. So that the church may be emboldened and that God may be glorified. Amen? Amen. 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 Stand on your feet.